Welcome back to Perthshire in Scotland and the Scottish Detectorists on the left hand side there just going in behind is Martin nearest to me is Peter and on the right hand side we've got Paul and a little dog running about is Lexi Martin's dog so we're on this field we haven't really done this field I've done it a few years ago but collectively we haven't First of all though, a shout out to West Country Clegg, who gave me a fantastic shout out on Friday night or Saturday. That was hugely appreciated. And also a big thanks for all the new subscribers. Hopefully you're enjoying what you see. This field's got a huge amount of history to it. There's some monuments around the edges of the field in in the next field over which date way back to the Neolithic period so they're many thousands of years old so let's see what we get so far we've had two ring pulls for me wonder if this will be number three and it's popped out straight away I don't think it's a coin I think we've got our first button. Yep, I can feel a shank on the back. Let's give it a wee rub-a-dub on the trousers and see what it looks like. And it is indeed our first button. It's been tinned or silvered. I can't see any decoration on it though. And on the back you can see where the loop's broken off. Date-wise, probably going to be early 1900s into the middle half, later half of the 1800s. So probably 1850s through to the 1950s, give or take. So barely five minutes in, Marty is already on two coins. We've got a five pence piece spendable Elizabeth II, 2003 on the left, and a big Queen Victoria penny. You can just make out her portrait facing left. It's a young head, so it's from the earlier part of her reign, probably around the middle of the 1800s, give or take. Other side. Um, you can just make out Britannia there in the centre. Date, though, can't see a date. And the other one, exactly the same as I got yesterday. A wee five pence piece, so... Maybe we'll club them together and buy ourselves a 10p chew. Another not bad signal. If this is another ring pull, I think I'll start to go in because I'm right on the edge of the field and notoriously that's where you find all the ring pulls and bits of aluminium. So let's see what we get. So we're out the hole and I can see it right there. Could it be a ring? Definitely got the right shape. Peel her open. It's definitely a ring shape, but is it a ring or is it an what we call an olive, which is for joining copper pipes when you're doing plumbing. So I can't see any decoration. Can't see any inscriptions or anything else. And it's got a bit of a green tinge to it, so I think we're going to put that down as a copper olive. We've got a good one here, nearly blew my ears off. Sounds coin-like, let's see what we get. And do you see what I see? We have got, I think, our first coin, for me at least. Yep, I think it's a coin. It is a coin. And he's looking to the right. Which I think means that's Edward. Edward the Seventh, I think. So here we go. Edward, Edwardus, V11, Edward the Seventh. De Gratia, by the grace of God. Omni Rex Fed Def End Imp 
which means Edward VII, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India. And on the reverse, one penny, 1906, with Britannia seated. So this is Edward, and he was the son of Queen Victoria, which is what Marty found just five minutes ago. So he only ruled from, I think it was 1901 until 1910. He was a bit of a playboy. He had to wait something like 60 years for his mother, Queen Victoria, to pass away for him to take the throne. And I think he smoked 40 cigarettes and 10 cigars a day. So that's the reason he only lasted nine years. A bit of an excessive lifestyle. Just realised I forgot to hit record. So this is what this one sounded like. Trust me, it was good. And it almost sounds very coin-like. That out there. That's it there. And it is a coin. I think. And I think it's actually going to be a one pence piece. It is. <laughs> oh man, we're pulling out the relics today, aren't we? So yet another spendable coin. I don't actually normally get that many, but that's, what, three or four we've had now in the last two days between us? It is a one pence piece, a spendable penny. Queen Elizabeth II, I think it's 1973 or 1975. And on the back, the portcullis, one new penny. Another decent signal, I can't seem to get away from them. Sounds like it could be coin-like, let's see what we get. It's there, oh it is. It's there. I think we might have another coin. We have. And it's not a spendable one. It's not very old though. It looks like it's a ship's halfpenny. It's probably going to be 1940s. Which means it's probably George the seventh or George the sixth is it? It's uh, Queen Elizabeth the second's father, I think. So let's give it a clean up and see. And it is indeed Georgius V one George the sixth. Georgius the sixth, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India, and. It's a very good condition halfpenny, called a ship's halfpenny because it's got the galley on it. And the date is 1938, so just before the outbreak of World War II. So George VI, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II's father, if you've seen the King's speech, that was him. He had a quite a bad stutter and he took the throne when his brother, Edward, I think it was Edward VIII, abdicated to marry the American divorcee. I'm sure you've all seen that in several films over the years, including the King's Speech. So Martin's doing really well. He's got a bit of an old spoon handle. He's got this unusual button. It's got like a white porcelain center to it. He's got a little lead seal. Can't make out the lettering. He's got a Queen Victoria halfpenny. This is an early coin. This is maybe a, a George I or a William and Mary, maybe. It's very thin. I can't see any detail on it, though. It looks like someone's attempted to pierce it, but unsuccessfully. And then he's got a little button, which has had decoration on it, but it's, it's gone. The halfpenny... Yeah, no date on it. It's corroded. But that's Queen Victoria, so it'll be sometime between the sort of 1850s and 1901, give or take. So well done, Marty, on top of the two coins he's had already. Paul is on three coins, or tokens. We've got a 
two pence piece spendable top right hand side this one on the left pretty crusty looks like it's going to be a Georgian George the first to George the third so that's going to put it sometime between 1715 and 1820 and then this one's unusual you can just make out the words there I think it says penny and I think this is going to be a token maybe it looks like it's got a a tower or a castle in the center and flip that over for me and uh, on the other side almost looks like it's got a castellated wall there or maybe it's a ship and then the others unfortunately are even the 2p has seen better days it's better on the back we can't even get a date off it but it's probably going to be 1980s or 1970s looking at the condition of it so it's taken Pete a good half hour to get going he ran out of batteries five minutes after starting had to go back to his car but he's turned up, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's a silver shilling. Queen Elizabeth II, the present monarch. De Gratia Regina Elizabeth II. And then, I think that's Def, is it? Defender. So basically the, the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, Defender of the Faith. On the back, one shilling. Ah, oh, there we are. Fid Def, so Defender of the Faith. 1954. And you can see the three lions of England in the centre. And the reason that it doesn't look silver is because after 1920s, I think it was, they reduced the silver content to 50%. And then sometime after that, they did away with it altogether. So even though it's called a silver shilling, there is actually, as far as I'm aware, no silver in it, which is why it goes this corroded way. But originally, it would have looked silver. End of the day, Pete's got his first coin, so that's us all had at least one coin. So another coin for Martin. I've got a good signal right here, which I'll dig in a minute. Almost sounds silver. We'll find out in a second. So Queen Victoria, pretty corroded. You can see Victor just there, facing to the left. It's a young head. So I'll put it in the earlier part of her reign. Got a date at the bottom, 1860 maybe, or 1866 possibly, and it's a well corroded half penny. But it's a coin. What's that? Number four. Four, yeah. four for Martin. He's in the lead. Let's see what I've got now. So this is my signal right here. Sounds very good. Probably going to be tin foil. Well, so much for my silver coin. <laughs> um, I'm going to put that down as tractor part of some description. So it really didn't sound that good, this signal, so I didn't film it. Have we got a coin? I have a nightmare to track down. Uh, I don't think so. Look, it's got a little, a little log, a little lug on the top. So it's not a coin. A little circle in the middle. Can't be a bit of a shotgun because it's got that wee tag. Maybe a seal of some description. Let's see if we can get any detail on it. No idea on this one. It's obviously nothing particularly important or valuable, but sometimes you find these little bits and you always wonder, what the hell was that? If anyone knows? Well, let me know. Here we go, Martin's found a seahorse. What do you think? <laughs> it's definitely got the right head shape for it, but uh, I think we can put that down as a bit of farm machinery. But he has, however, turned up a nice wee interesting thing, which is this. It is a little, that's the back, so it would have had a pin. And on this side, look at that, it's got a lovely red enamel. There's a figure in the middle, and the writing seems to say Health and Strength League. I've never seen one of them before. It looks like there's been lettering in the top, but it's because it's not enameled there. It's illegible. Let me have a wee look on my phone if we've got a signal. Try and figure out what that is. Interesting anyway. There's Marty's other recent finds. Looks like a bit of a flywheel. And someone in the fields has been doing a little bit of drinking. 
because we've got Johnny Walker and Sons of Kilmarnock. They were still based in Kilmarnock, but I think they've actually just recently closed their factory and moved somewhere else. And then another big horse buckle made of iron. Probably not very old, um, 1900s, maybe into the middle of the 1800s. Probably off a big shire horse that would have worked the field. Still, good finds. And Pete's turned up the oldest find to date. Not that. Not that. Which is this. It's another hammered coin. But it's a Scottish hammered coin and it's from a time when Scotland didn't have very much money. So unlike in England, when they made their coins from silver, we were making them from copper. And this is a copper turner, which is a two pence piece. And just in the middle there, you might just be able to make out a silhouette of a thistle. There's the head right in the middle and the two leaves coming off to either side. So that's the oldest find so far. It's going to date to either Charles I or Charles II. And that puts it sometime between 1625 through to about, I think he was on the throne until about 1670, 1680. So a 17th century hammered copper coin and you can see how thin it is. They don't survive very well in the soil. Sometimes you get some nice ones though, but at least you can tell a little bit of detail on that. And on the back it would have said the letters C and R for Charles Rex. And then there would either have been a, a little 2 at the side to say it was Charles II or it would have just said CR which would meant it would be Charles I. But a great little find shows you there's some good history here. So this signal wasn't the best, however look what's just popped out as soon as it's hit the ground. I think we've got another spendable, I think that might be a 10 pence. Maybe a two pence. It is 10p. Let's give it a wee rub. My God, we're making a fortune today. So we look like we've got the date 1992. Queen Elizabeth II. A spendable 10 pence piece. So this would have been bright silver when it was lost. But it's uh, turned brown. But that's us up, I think, about 15 pence already. It's going to be the best haul we've had in years. Definitely sounds like a coin. I was wrong last time. Let's see about this time. So we're out the hole. There it is there. And that looks pretty circular to me. I think we're going to have another coin. Cracker open. There we go. Well, it's not spendable. What is that? Is that a figure or not? Hmm. Not sure about that one. Let's see this side. Well, there's definitely that's Britannia. That looks like Britannia. Let's give it a wee rub-a-dub on the trousers and see what it looks like. Looks like it might be in quite good condition. I think it's Georgian. So let's see what we get. Well, it's a cracker. The more I rub it, the better it gets. Look at that. Georgios 1-1. And he's facing left. And then the words Rex just there. So that is George the Second. Haven't had a good one of him for a while. Very nice. And on the other side, looks like we've got the words Britannia. And then there would be a date down here. But I don't think I can get it clean enough for that. Nope, I think it's it's gone. Yep, can't see anything there. But Britannia seated on the back. He was on the throne from, I think it was 1727 until 1760. And then his grandson, George III, took the throne. This is from a really interesting time in Scottish history. Because George II, his son, 
the butcher, the Duke of Cumberland, the butcher Cumberland that he's known in Scotland. He fought against Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobites at the Battle of Culloden in 1746. And then he committed some of the most awful atrocities against the Highlands, particularly the the Jacobite supporting clans, what today would be called ethnic cleansing or genocide. So George II, defeater of the Jacobites, he's also the last uh, British monarch to fight in a war. He fought during the Austrian succession, which was a, a conflict that lasted through much of the 1740s. So he fought, I think if I remember rightly, it was in Austria. And uh, it's not a halfpenny, I think that's going to be a farthing, maybe. And a farthing is a quarter of a pence. But it's in great condition. Probably helped by this sandy, stony soil at this end of the field. Bit of cracker, so that takes us right back to the time of the Jacobites and Bonnie Prince Charlie. Over the moon with that, that's my best find so far, by a long way. Right ladies and gents, so I've just found this coin. Martin was coming in my general direction saying that he had something for me to have a look at, right? I'm proud as punch of my little George II, what I think is a farthing, which would be a quarter of a pence. And uh, that's from the Jacobite era, which is my favourite sort of period in history. Now, People are going to see this video and they're going to be like, these guys are at it. Um, but Martin, at the other end of the field, finds something, sticks it in his pocket, detects in this general direction and he says to me, have a look at this. I think, it, I think it's maybe a bottle top. I've shown it to Peter. Uh, what do you reckon? Now, he showed me that. Now I've actually got goosebumps at the moment holding it <laughs> and there's Marty looking pretty happy with his Scottish detectorist hoodie on. Now I'll tell you because you can't see because or you can't feel it because I'm holding it and you're not but this is very heavy. As soon as he put it in my hand I thought that's not a bottle top because it's too heavy. Then I rolled it over and I can see a crown at the top and various bits of lettering around the edge. Now what's throwing me is, see at the edge it almost looks silvery rather than gold. But I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm going to say that I think Martin's just found a gold hammered coin. Now. There's one edge there, which you can see it's folded over, and there's the other edge here. You can see crowns, you can see letters around the outside edge. It's a big coin. That's going to come out to about my thumb. And I think that is a gold noble, which I think means it's English. And we are in Perthshire, in Scotland. And I just found a quarter gold noble last week in South Gloucestershire. And I think Martin has just gone and found an English full gold noble in Scotland. It is heavy, it is shiny, and it looks like it's made of gold. Martin's never found anything gold. He's only been metal detecting for a year, less than a year, nine months. And I think he's found a gold medieval hammered coin. It's folded into lots of different shapes and he thought it was a bottle top. <laughs> Thank God he didn't throw it in the bushes and he came to show me it. But if this is if this is a gold hammered coin and I think it I think it is, because if it's a replica, why would someone bring a replica into a field, fold it up and throw it away? It doesn't make any sense. That has to be a gold hammered coin and if it is it's a once in a lifetime find and it could be worth a fortune it would need to be professionally straightened oh, Martin what have you done? Thank God you didn't throw that in the bushes there's a face of, of excitement 
of uh, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. People are going to think we're at it. Two gold hammered coins in a week between us. The dog has brought luck. Lexi, well done. Well done, Lexi. Well done. Oh, give it again. Let me see it. Martin's shaking. That is, that has to be a gold hammered coin. And it's going to be a whopper. Look at the size of it. Right, we're going to need to investigate this further, but there's no doubt about it. That is a big coin. And it looks like it's solid gold. Look, you can see a lion there. You can see a crown just there. You can make out some lettering around the edge. And on the other side, you can see another crown here. You can see this strange design going on here. It's like a face with two eyes. You can make out some gothic lettering around the edge. That's incredible if that's if that's real. Two gold hammered coins between four of us in a week. People metal detect for 50 years and don't find one. We're going to have to consult some some experts on this, but my God, it's heavy. Right, we've, I've, I've found gold twice and I haven't done a gold dance. Marty, we think, has found gold, so he's going to do a wee gold dance. <laughs> come on, he's no... Come on, Marty, do a wee gold dance. Look at him trembling away. I like you shaking. He's shaking. This is unbelievable. Honestly, if anyone's watching this thinking, these guys are at it, honestly, we're not. It's 100% genuine. 100%. Now, here's Pete coming. Because Pete thought it was a bottle top. My God, if Marty had thrown that in the in the bushes at the side, we'd have been in real trouble. Let's see. We'll see Pete's reaction. Showing Pete the coin. Pete reckons. <laughs> Pete reckons Lucasade. What do you think, Pete? I don't know. Pete doesn't know. Do not bend it up. Pete. <laughs> Pete, stop it. Pete, that's a gold hammered coin. Just open that. But it's a gold hammered coin. Open your don't open it out. No, I don't touch <laughs> What the hell? Do you not believe us? Pete doesn't believe us. Pete's starting to believe us. The penny's dropping. No, don't. I'm not. <laughs> it. So there's one edge right there. And that's the other edge there, and it's folded in on itself two or three times. Feel the weight in it. I think it's a gold noble, or something like that. It's definitely too heavy to be a bottle top, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, Pete, have you found anything like that and thrown it in the bushes? No. <laughs> thank, God. Here if I <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> right, we're going to go back and check where Marty found this, just in case there's any more. What's throwing us is the edge. Because mm, it's not gold. But it could be that it's not pure, pure gold and the edge is deteriorated slightly. But if that's a gold coin, then that's... If that's to be fair, wait, if that's not gold, that's lead. It can't be lead. It would have gone white if it was well, lead. that's what I mean, but... That's, that's going to be incredible if that's a gold coin. That could be worth a small fortune. Right, everyone's watching this just now going, don't let them touch that coin. <laughs> right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go back to where it was found and we're gonna have a search and see. Who knows, maybe there's a flipping chest full of them. That's a right there, right? No, I thought it was a face, like a pair of eyes almost. I'm gonna have a quick look on my phone online and see if there's what is it a B? See if there's anything else. It could be like a letter B, yeah. Right, we're going to go and have a look and see. Lucas Hyde. <laughs> Pete still thinks Lucas Hyde. <laughs> so there we go. The Scottish detector ists, because we've become plural now, because originally it was just me, but this lot have joined in. With potentially two gold hammered coins in a week at opposite ends of the country.
So I've just figured out, Marty found that coin at around about 3 o'clock and it's Sunday today and uh, that would be exactly 7 days from the time that I found that gold quarter noble in South Gloucestershire at Detectiveville last week. 7 days almost to the minute it looks like Marty's found a gold hammered coin. So I'm going to do what I do best when we find gold coins. None of this dancing malarkey. I'm just going to lie down and de-stress. Because this is incredible. Oh, can't believe it. I didn't even find it. But I'm his mentor. So incredible. So Pete's just given out a shout that he's got a silver ring. And he has got a silver ring. It's broken at the bottom. We're around the fine spot of where the gold coin came from. What are we talking? Maybe 10 metres away? And I think that that is medieval. Looking at the bezel and the plain decoration. This is incredible. That is fantastic. Well done, Pete. Anyone any ideas on a date for that? Be interested to know if it ties in with whatever date you think the gold coin might be. I've done a quick look online and I think it might be what's called a Rose Noble or a Gold Ryle or Ryle R-Y-A-L which might make it around the same time as my gold coin sometime in the 13 into the 1400s We think that the what looks like a pair of eyes in a face might actually be an E, a letter E and it would be in a flag that would be on a basically on the ship on the the heads side of the coin and we think it's an E for Edward so it could be Edward the third or it could be Edward the fourth so that would put it sometime in either the 1360s or in the 1460s I think but this is obviously very very promising Right we're still in the search area so far apart from that silver ring that Peter got uh, nothing else Marty though just turned up this thing looks like it's got a hole through it it feels like it's i don't know if it's iron or if it's bronze it's a hefty thing though anyone get any idea what that might be don't think i've ever seen something like that before it looks too thick to be you know plow related but could it be the broken tip of a plow but even then it's not it's not rusted and if it was a plough tip, I would have thought it would be iron. So, uh, let me know if you know what that is. We'll put it somewhere safe. So, Lexi has been our good luck charm, wagging her tail. Final find for Martin. Look at that for a bullet. Oh, focus. There we go. Look at that. That's the most bizarre looking bullet I think I've ever seen. Um, any idea what that is? What calibre? What age? Almost looks slightly hollow inside as well. There's not a lot of weight to it. So if you know what that is, let us know. This is the point in time where we normally go through all the finds and show you what we've got. But there's not really much point. It all pales into insignificance when you look at this. So this is Marty's first ever gold coin. How long have you been detecting for? Nine months. Nine months. It took me 21 years to find my first, which was a half sovereign, and then it took me to 22 years to find my first gold hammered. And in nine months, Martin's found his first gold hammered coin. So we've been looking a little bit online, trying to find out a little bit more. We think it's a, a type of gold noble called a rose noble or a a gold Rial, R-Y-A-L, we're not certain. Um, but what's given it away is what I mentioned earlier, which is the, see this face up here, which we thought looked like a pair of eyes, almost like a cat. It looks like that is a flag with the letter E in Gothic typewriting. And uh, that would make it probably Edward III or Edward IV. So that's going to make it 
sometime in the 1300s into about 1460, 1470. So we're going to have to do some further investigations and see about getting this straightened out professionally. But there you go. Beyond that, we actually did brilliantly. We got a mountain of coins, buckles, bolts, buttons, you name it. But uh, this steals the show. Paul's just come over to show me his wee pile, so let's let's uh, humour him. We'll give Marty back his, his gold coin. We'll rest that on his hand. So Paul managed... Uh, what have we got? Georgian coin. This token. We need to do a bit more investigation into that. A bit of lead. Looks like a lead seal. And... Uh, a button? No, sorry, a bullet maybe? Part of a bullet? Not sure. No. Nope. That's a hem. A lady's skirt hem to hold it down. Stop her doing a Marilyn Monroe in the field, blown up over her head. A couple of what we think are this one's a strange shape, but we think it's a musket ball. And that's a better looking musket ball. And then on top of that, a button, fragment of lead, and a bigger fragment of lead. But as I say, there's the star of the show. The sun's coming out, just to show it in its full glory. What a find, Martin. What a find. That is incredible. Absolutely stunning. I'll, I can't wait to see that straightened out, to see the detail on it. But I'm expecting there's going to be a king with a big ship standing on the prow with a wee flag. Beautiful. Beautiful.